River Rats. This week on Life on Jupiter, after an emotional start, we're underway. We're headed up the Hudson River and we are ready to drop the mast. Regardless of the continued emotional harassment from my favorite bank in Hong Kong, Jupiter 2 and crew continue up the Hudson River to Catskill, where we will drop our mast. Well, that was our last bridge, I think, before we dropped the mast. The last time we really need to check air clearance. We'll be in Catskill later today and uh, probably dropping the mast tomorrow. So today we're going to start taking down all the sails, the boom off, and maybe uh, start thinking about the electrical wiring, how I'm going to um, remove and you know easily reconnect that when we want to put the mask back up something different to consider and this river life too is you know different considerations it's, it's a nice change mostly flat apart from power boats and uh, quite a few logs we have to avoid so you you, you got to keep good watch Last night we anchored next to a sewer. We won't do that again. What else? Oh, a little bit of current against this at the moment. I think another, when, whenever we get to our first lock, which I think is in about 80 miles, so at least another day or two, there'll be no more tide. It's amazing, the tide actually reaches this far up the river. We are about 60 miles up the river from New York so far and still getting some tidal effect. It seems so serene and beautiful and it is except for about every 20 minutes <laughs> we have a train running down each side, a train down each bank of the river. One's a freight train on this side and this is a passenger train. It must, uh, must be annoying to the incredibly rich people that uh, buy property here overlooking the river. Some of the houses are amazing. We're planning where the mast will sit on the deck um, and what sort of crutches we need to build. It's going to be another three and a half. It's going to be five meters off the back of the bimini here. And we can go a little more forward, but yeah, it's going to be at least four meters over the back and four meters over the front. It's 18 and a half meters thick. Um, so we've got to work out exactly where it's going to go where. So this was going to be... It just has to be this. Uh, this is going to be so six meters that way. Twelve and a half that way. So we've got to measure six meters. Before we get too committed here, we better have a bit of a chat about requirements, restrictions and limitations of the vessel. As far as size of the boat goes, the limiting factor is the draft, the depth. Five feet is preferable, but I believe six foot draft vessels have completed the loop. 
you can expect to touch the bottom from time to time with six foot draft. The catamaran's actually ideal because of the shallow draft. We have a draft of about three and a half feet. And even we touch the bottom occasionally. Length of the vessel, there's almost no practical limit really. I mean, let's keep it under a hundred feet, for example. No big deal. Maybe you better do your own research on these dimensions, but uh, let's say 60 foot is still no problem, okay? 60 foot boat, no problem. Beam, we are 25 feet wide. Uh, we had no problem with the locks on the Erie Canal, which are a bit narrower than further down the, uh, the system, but uh, I would say up to 40 feet and you'd still probably be okay. The only problem is there are some narrow river passages there, which I looked, you know, as we were going through and went, oh, geez, lucky we're not twice as wide. I'm saying a, a maximum beam of around 40 foot for the, the routing that we took. If you choose to go up into Canada, into the Trent Seven Canal, they have a limitation of 23 foot wide because of the, uh, the locks there. Air draft is pretty important also. Obviously a sailing boat can't do this with the mast up. The ICW, the intracoastal waterways, even the Gulf Coastal waterways, they all have a 65 foot air draft clearance. Uh, there are lower bridges, but they open, assuming they're in operational order. But the Erie Canal, no chance of that you still need a maximum air draft of about 19 feet. If you use 19 feet as a rule of thumb for the Erie Canal, you can get through it. So starting to think about what we need to do. One of them, of course, is get everything down, including the sails. So we're going to fold up the sails, put them away out of the sun, and uh, means we've got to fold them up on the deck. And the deck's pretty dirty. Uh, this river water seems to, even the dew seems to settle dirty water on the deck every day. So um, we are uh, got to hose off, give it a bit of a scrub down, let it dry, and then we can fold the sails up later. River rats. One of the beauties of living on the river is the water maker is very efficient. It makes double the water that uh, seawater makes because it's already mostly fresh, just needs filtering. So we're making about seven gallons a minute at the moment. Well, now we can fold up the sails once it's dry. Might do the cockpit. Otherwise, we're going to walk mud around from the cockpit onto here, so. Final sail for at least six months. Tomorrow, or maybe it's the next day, mast coming down. We've got a nice uh, five knot breeze up the bum, and why not use it? Air out the screecher for the last time in quite a while. We've only got six miles to go, so we'll be there in an hour. And we thought just a little extra speed would put the turbo boost extra sail area on. Every little bit helps. even cold beers. Really? Yeah. So I just took the dinghy in there to Catskill and I, there was a, a boat there with a mast laying down and uh, I just said, uh, oh did you just drop your mast? Yeah we're dropping ours tomorrow. And anyway they're packing their boat up, they dropped the mast, packing their boat up to go home for five weeks. Mm -hmm. So they gave us all their provisions that were left. <laughs> this is the second time that Someone gave yeah. us a 
I'll let it cool. That's good, isn't it? Cinnamon. Yeah. Wow. Maybe you have free carbs. If it's free. Mm -hmm. No, this is... Free carbs. This is good thing about cruisers. We help each other. Oh. <laughs> Looks scary. Oh god. <laughs> 30 knots. beginning of one just that you see the rotation but uh, I think the worst of it's over the worst of it's over there we're on the edge of it here dropping a demo.
so boom is off we've just got uh, shrouds to go and the furlough has got to come off um, so I've got to go up the mast to release that up the top uh, oh I've got to do the wiring got to get under the mast base and disconnect all the antennas it's not that much it's two VHFs and nav lights and radar that's it so we'll do that next So that it slides through smoothly. So, uh, I may get you to throw the mid rope to them first. So we, yeah, we can grab some of the timber and start making Yeah, it. yeah, you can start making your stands up and do whatever. We have uh, drills for you if you need to use some drills, uh, some saws if you need a saw, some weird screws. Yeah, we might actually, because I'm all two, 220 volt. Okay. Uh, and I don't have a drill that will unscrew those screws in the, okay. in the yeah, timber. Okay, yeah, we have everything that you'll need, so. Okay. Pretty low. Is that one? Um, even that old one right there may do. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Start with it. Yeah. 
about that roughly. I think it'll be ideal. Even if we had to put a few more planks on top. Mm -hmm. um, but we just have to, with ropes, we can even use the winches. Brace it so that it doesn't rock back and forth. It doesn't do this. Mm. When the fur has gone, you know, it will sit there. Yeah. It's just only two bolts holding the catwalk. I'd rather it be on the cross beam. I think it'll be enough. It's only like we're in when we're in the lakes and the, the waves get up. Bang, bang, you know, with the waves. Mm. Just a bit of pressure on our catwalk attachment. I think it'll be okay then. We were pretty impressed with Riverview Marine Services. They offered the exact level of service that I was looking for and at the right price. All I wanted was someone to drive the crane, I'll do the rest. And what was really great was the big pile of lumber that we could use to make our supports for free. And they even provided power tools. So we loved our rockner so much. <laughs> and we lost it two days ago. It was only two days ago. Mm. This is America. You can get anything you want in two days. It only cost us eleven hundred dollars, but <laughs> now we uh, you gotta have two anchors, you know. Gotta have your redundancy. And this was the, the main guy. Yeah. This was our it's never let us down actually. So yeah. Shining.